It's a busy day in the office for scientists aboard the research vessel Blue Heron. Their mission? Pull out all the stops to learn all they can about large lakes. On this July day, they are plying the waters of Lake Superior. There's a wide variety of impacts to large lakes. Lake Erie, which is the most impacted. On the other end of the spectrum is Lake Superior, whose waters are mostly in pretty good shape. Geologist Steve Coleman is the director of the Large Lakes Observatory, or LLO, at the University of Minnesota, Duluth. Scientists here study the biology, chemistry, physics, and geology of lakes around the world, key reservoirs for much of the fresh water on the planet. As I started doing work in Lake Superior, I came to realize that there had been very little done in the way of scientific study of these lakes beyond the biology of the fish. Oceanographer Tom Johnson helped establish the observatory in 1994. We see, for example, that Lake Superior uh, is warming at a rate that surprises us. Using tools like this robotic glider, physicist Jay Austin is gathering data on the long-term response of Lake Superior to climate change. He also studies variations in ice cover. One of the things that I'm very interested in is determining better links between changes in the regional climate and what happens in the lake itself. And we can watch how the physics and the biology of the lake change over time. Back on dry land, research teams also study sediment cores like this one drilled from the bottom of a lake in Mexico. The sediments are like a tape recorder. As they accumulate, they're recording something about climate, hydrology, the energy of the lake. Shortly after we visited, the Blue Heron embarked on a 17-day excursion on Lake Superior, Huron, and Erie, focused on how a buildup of nitrates is impacting their ecology. You might say it's a great laboratory on a great lake. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.